Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, we'll do some start with the exercise as usual. <coughs> We do some light martial arts, okay? Something very light um, with arms, using arms. Yeah, upper body martial arts, okay? So, yeah. Uh, okay. I guess we get start with punches. Uh, yeah, just nothing fancy, just, you know. Okay. <clears throat> right. Ah, oh, that's good. What else? <sighs> Great cardio, right? Yeah. I think that's enough. <laughs> so it's like just one minute, right? Yeah, that's great. Okay, we'll take that five minutes, okay? Whew. Good exercise. <sighs>
Okay. Yeah. Let me unplug this uh, external hard drive. Yeah, I start this episode, I mean, just before the episode starts, I uh, transfer, copy over, I mean, cut and paste the previous episode because they're like 10 gigabyte each. So. Okay. Yeah, so I took a long nap. Uh, happy Sunday evening. Um, yeah, it was very restful, peaceful. Sunday nap. Uh, ah, yeah, there it is. Okay. Yeah, so. Yeah, I mean, this weekend kind of I was bombed out because President Trump's Senate trial of Quito it was such a bummer, right? So, but. Yeah. It's a bummer, right? Yeah, too many people. Because I, you know what? Let me change this. <laughs> it's just too small for me. <laughs> Does not look good. Yeah, it was such a bummer to many people. I mean, well, for President Trump and his supporters, well, congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. Uh, they won the trial, so yeah, congratulations. Uh, yeah. Piece of lint. No idea where it came from. Yeah, it, it was a bummer, but uh, but uh, House Congress people they did fantastic job. Uh, the legal arguments, Congress men, Congress women. Uh, yeah, I found out the name of that Colorado African American congressman. Mr. Negus, yeah, he, he was very good. Mr. Negus from Colorado, uh, Mr. Liu from California, and of course, Mr. Raskin from Maryland. They did a fantastic job. So I think it's, it was a very good trial, and it was very educational and also very entertaining as well. So I think, yeah, we can call that a success, okay? I mean, impeached or not, the result of Senate trial, it does not matter much because there's no real legal ramification whether former President Trump get convicted or not in a Senate trial. It's a Senate trial, right? So it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't really matter. It was very educational. Okay, so I enjoyed. I didn't watch it, but I just listened to the radio. <clears throat> While I was driving, that's pretty much it. That's my exposure to this Senate trial. But it was highly educational and highly entertaining. So, yeah, congratulations to all those Democratic Party congressmen and women uh, who did fantastic job. They, they, are, they may have a good chance for Democratic Party primary in 2024, okay. Yeah, because they did a fantastic job. Okay. Yeah. Thoroughly impressed, yeah. Yeah. It was good. 
Yeah, very educational. So, yeah, the result of a trial is not that important. Okay. Oh, by the way, the law of anti-gayism, yeah, the website they used to host that paper, yeah, they kind of canceled my account. Okay, so. Uh, but I'm very grateful to them because they've been, they have been housing my paper, actually several of them, um, for six years. Even for seven years, something like that, okay, so. I'm very grateful, okay. And it's, in a way, it's a good news because they finally noticed <laughs> the content of my papers. Hi highly conservative, okay. Uh, and um, they are located in uh, San Francisco, California, okay. So this heavily liberal place, and they finally got the words, I guess, about this paper, maybe some complaints from some readers, possibly. So words are getting out, so that's a good news, okay. So what I'm going to do, yeah, I already done, uh, I transferred those papers to some other websites. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of refuge, right? We are running away from here to there, different online databases, okay? Avoiding censorship, yeah. But I'm very grateful to them, okay? Uh, they, for free, they housed my papers for seven years. It's time to, for them to retire, right? Yeah, that's understandable. So, yeah, no hard feelings. Okay? I'm just grateful. Yeah, I just moved to different online databases. Yeah, just PDF upload. It's not that difficult. And low anti gazing I already moved. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm grateful, but I cannot help. Quoting Mr. Jesus Christ, yeah, those who are persecuted for the righteousness sake, yeah, they'll get reward, All right? So, it's a good news, okay? So, yeah, we have been well noticed and <sighs> suppressed a little bit, but that's fine, whatever. It's, it's, it's a good sign that words are getting out, right? So, that's good. I just switch to different database, that's all. all right. No problem. And if another database block me, no problem, okay? I just switch to another, 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 okay? And along the way, yeah, this human series or papers, you will get more and more known, all right? So it's kind of molecular diffusion, right? Like coronavirus, <clears throat> it's just a matter of time that it's spread around. It's evolution, okay? Yeah, it's, we're gonna talk about eugenics, but, uh, coronavirus, yeah, mandatory masking, lockdown, shutdown, it only slowed down the spread of coronavirus, which is good. You know, to give us, our body, immune system, some time to produce antibodies for it, okay? So, yeah, I can appreciate that, okay, yeah. But eventually it will just spread, because it's a molecular diffusion, it's low entropy, second low thermodynamics, right, yeah. It, it's just a matter of time. So, the best medicine, in my opinion, is diet, exercise, personal hygiene, just be healthy, okay. And temperature control, very important. And also hydration, drink a lot of water, and yeah. Some Asian bathing, yeah, exfoliation with fingernails, so gentle, gentle scraping of entire body skin, so, you know, to exfoliate the dead skin, okay. And it's a very good massage, very good relaxation in a bathtub, warm water, and um, yeah, very healthy. The Korean bathing tradition, okay, is uh, exfoliation using fingernails, okay, yeah. Gently, okay? In the best stuff. Yeah. I do that at least once a week, okay? We have to wake up early to do that, but... Uh, yeah. Yeah. So life is good. Uh, uh, 
Person throws impeachment trial, yeah, it was a bummer because they acquitted him for political partisanship reason, I guess, right? So Republican Party, they want to resist these Democratic parties, whatever they do, right? So, and personal sympathy, compassion of their former chief, former President Trump, okay? Yeah, we understand that, okay? So, and because everybody knows in their heart what he did is obviously wrong, okay? So, I guess they want to show him some, cut him some slack, okay? Because everybody knows what he did. And he was wrong. January 6th, right? Everybody knows. So yeah, let's cut him some slack. Okay, so give him some break. Because what he did damages him tremendously in business because people don't want to deal with him. Politics, yeah, there's no way he's going to come back in politics, especially. Even if he tries, he will fail again, in my opinion, okay? It, it, he just made too big a mistake this time. And people in the world saw it. He already fell, all right? Will he come back as something else? Yeah, possible. Okay. But we do recommend him to repent, remorse, and pay victims of his crime. $10 million, at least $10,000 each, okay, so there were about a thousand of them, right? Crime, the victims of his crime, Donald J. Trump's crime, he's criminal, okay? <laughs> Technically, he is. He may pardon himself, but, and, but yeah, he, he did come a crime, okay? Like Mr. George Floyd. Mr. Trump, George Floyd, Democratic Party's guy, George Floyd, Trump, Republican Party's God, and the two gods America have, they're both criminals. Okay, that's very sad. And, but, it is very dire situation that America is having, okay? Moral crisis. But, we can look it to the future, you okay? know, and we pray, we do our best to make America a better place. Yeah, I love this country. Yeah, it's metaphysically very, very low point that we are having. You have tattoo piercing, you have LGBT, you have ultra internationalism. All those bad ideologies are dominating America nowadays. Marijuanaism, right? And BLM. You have all the pro-Trumpism. The worst ideologies are dominating. So it's like this uh, Yulangi the period of floating ghost, like Pandora's box open, all these ideological demons are just floating around and dominating American culture. It is a very dire situation. But in humanology, yeah, we know cycle, ideological cycle, okay, it's ups and downs, ups and downs, right? So we can easily predict that, uh, you know, decade or so, We'll have a very good time. It will be ideologically sound America again. Why? It's always up and down, up and down. Okay, so we are at a very low point of ideologically, metaphysically evil time. It means, you know, decade or so when this is over, we'll have a very good time. Ideologically sound time. Okay. That's die dualism, dual dualism. Okay. Yeah, we do make. That kind of prediction, okay? It, it's just the way universe is, okay? Just like day and night, summer, spring, winter, four seasons, right? Yeah, it's like that. Okay? Like Mr. G just said, okay? Yeah, those who are weeping, crying, yeah, they will walk, laugh later. Good times are coming, okay? So. And she just said also, yeah, those who are laughing, well, they will cry later. It's, it's up and down, up and down. It's like eternal recurrence, okay? That's just how universe is, okay? Yeah, so good times are ahead of us, okay? We don't know when it's going to happen. We just need to survive, persevere, tolerate, and be patient. Then good times will come.
Guaranteed. Okay. It's because if you look back in the human history, it's been always like that. Good time, bad time, good time, bad time. Microscopically, yeah, our life. We look back, good time, bad time, good time, bad time. Okay. It's just how universe is. Okay. okay we we'll take five minutes. Okay. okay. Very good. Yeah, it's getting chilly again. Okay. Okay, so I did some online chatting with my friends, and I have friends who are more liberal, who are more conservative. I both kinds of friends. Okay, it it always helps, right, to have some balanced view because Republican Party, Democratic Party, people are people. Nobody's perfect, right? Yeah. Sometimes Democrats are more right than Republicans. Other times, Republicans are more right than Democrats. Yeah, it's like yin and yang, plus minus, day and night cycle, right? Ideological cycle. Yeah. We all we know all about it, okay? Dual dualism. And this paper, yeah, it's gonna take more time, over a couple of more weeks, I guess. I'm experiencing this scope creeping, okay? It's, because human knowledge is a big field, and uh, after this paper, I'm not sure if I'm going to write again about human knowledge, okay, because maybe later, maybe a year later, okay, if we have other things to write about, like climate change and alarmism, okay, because I'm kind of against climate change alarmism, and also about economics, right, the transaction and demand theory, yeah. So in this human rights paper, I want to inject as many things as possible, okay, including this proof of uh, 
Mr. Gale Cantor's uh, infinite number theory. Okay, so but it's just too important to not mention. Okay, and uh, give me one second. Okay, let me go to bathroom real quick. Ah. Uh. So I continue to watch this uh, Return of the King, Lord of the Ring, and gladly found that yeah they resurrected that girl. Okay, that's good. Yeah, because it's it's. <laughs> It was the big mistake they made. It's such an out of character for that female warrior, beautiful lady, with blonde hair and blue eyes, white skin. Yeah, she's a very beautiful lady. And her character in Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King, uh, she's a warrior. But, and she won the war. But she committed suicide. That just doesn't make any sense. But later on, they resurrected that girl. Later on, I did not know. Okay, so yeah, good. So they can redeem themselves, the makers of this movie. Yeah, that's great. So I finished watching that movie. I think it, it was overall very well made. I mean, the at the end of the si movie, come too extended a little bit, but it wasn't too bad. Okay, they did a good job. Just very long movie. Yeah. I like that part where Frodo said, the ring is mine. Okay, uh, that was good, all right. And after that, after everything is over, Frodo leaves town in a ship with this kind of demigods. Okay, so I'm like, where are they going? I, I guess some kind of promotion, okay? Maybe they become saints to do politics, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, it's Sunday night, so maybe it's story time. Uh, yeah, mathematics, yeah, the elitist institution the in Seoul, South Korea, presumably second best high school back then, okay. 
science high school, very elitist, uh, entrance exam, okay, so, yeah, I did enjoy learning mathematics there, um, because there was, there were main focus, because science high school, right, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, of course, biology, chemistry, physics, right? But mostly heavy emphasis in mathematics. And I, I did enjoy learning mathematics from those uh, teachers. And they're very good teachers, okay? So. And then after two months, I dropped out and transferred to regular high school. Why? It was too much for me, okay? I couldn't take it. I remember English homework assignment is so unnecessarily labor intensive kind of homeworks, okay? It was just not necessary at all, okay? So I, I okay. Yeah, but whatever, okay, but Mathematics education in science high school, yeah, it was very good. I enjoyed it. And before I get into that science high school, yeah, I studied a lot of mathematics, okay. Um, learned a great deal. And um, yeah. later I transferred to regular high school in town, in Pampo, South of the River, Gangnam, okay. Uh, middle class neighborhood so they are yeah also very good mathematics teachers in regular high school okay and i i did learn very good there too okay so, so in korea at least back then the hakyo and hagwon hakyo means public school right hagwon means a smaller class sometimes or sometimes bigger class it's just after hours schooling paid by our parents. It's like, after public school, yeah, we go to a private school. It's like 80 hours a week, kind of. 40 hours a week, public school, 40 hours a week. Maybe not 40 hours, maybe 20 hours, so 60 hours a week. 20 hours a week, we spend time in half one, which is private school, on top of public school, okay? So that's how it was back then, okay? Nowadays, I don't know. So a lot of schooling, a lot of mathematical education, um, also, yeah, English and sometimes Korean literature or physics. Yeah, and it was good. Yeah. I met so many wonderful teachers, okay, in Hakkyo, Hagwon, the private public school, okay. Yeah, wonderful teachers, Korean teachers, okay. In mathematics, in physics, I loved it. I loved studying those things. It was fun. Yeah. 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 Then la later on, Madison, Wisconsin, I took biology classes. I learned very good biology there. And after that, Cornell University, for, I was there for two years. Then I dropped out, okay? PhD program. I took a lot of biology classes, okay? And learned a lot because I was in computational biology field, right? So, yeah. Learned great deal about biochemistry, biology, right? Good education. How about special forces? I was there for two weeks. Then I dropped out, okay? Full break, North Carolina. Yeah, I met wonderful people there too. Okay, yeah. And did learn a great deal, like land navigation, individual not land navigation, okay. Sure, I was decent at it, okay, but uh, 
not as well as uh, some others. All right. So, yeah. I met some people who are so good at it. <laughs> they don't even need compass. Okay. All they need is map, and they look at the mountains and they know where they are, where to go. Some people are just very good at it. Okay. Maybe they are experienced in that area. Net, land navigation, map reading. Me, I was decent at it. Okay, uh, but I was okay with it. Okay, so, but not good enough. Not nearly good enough to be special forces. Okay, I got lost. <laughs> I got lost. Okay, in the woods, forest. It's like semi-public, semi-private. I mean, I, I guess the government land, army land, but it's outside the base of Fort Bragg. It's quite public area, so there are some people who ride horses and, I guess, hunt with dogs, some whistles. I heard some whistles by these private individuals. Then I, I thought maybe it was our sergeants. Calling us. So I followed the whistle. Then later on, I realized, oh, that's private personnel, maybe hunting, maybe dog whistling, whatever. Okay, uh, whatever. But I was confused, kinda. Okay. Uh, it, it was tough, but challenging. But I dropped out after two weeks. U.S. Army Special Forces. Okay. I. It was too much for me. Okay. So I was like. Yeah, I don't want to do this anymore. Okay, so so I called in, had my MRE and radioed in so that they can come and pick up. Okay, pick me up. So that was the end of my special forces career. Two weeks. Okay, but of course before that, about a month or so. Yeah, very intense training to prepare for that, and that was very fun. Okay, very challenging too. Yeah, in Hollywood, yeah, Hollywood can be thought as some kind of elitist institution, informally, right, for entertainers, okay. I dropped out after two years of this Hollywood career, okay. Because after two years, I, I didn't want to do it anymore. I got, I had enough of that, so. I dropped out after two years. Okay, so. PhD, yeah, Cornell, I believe. Dropped, dropped out after two years. Right. Sci Korean Science High School, Seoul, yeah, dropped out after two months. <laughs> okay. How about law school? Top 10 law school, Michigan. I did not drop out. That's why I graduated in two years, typically three years, law school. Okay. But I graduated in two years. Why? I did not drop out. I did not want to drop out again. So I just went through it as quickly as possible. And I did graduate. Surprise, surprise, right? <sighs> but, hey, U Mi University of Michigan, that's public school, okay? Top 10, yeah, in and out, okay, on the fringe, right? Well, it's very good school, good professors, good students, okay? But it's public school, okay, so... Not too much elitism, okay? It's public school. Huh? Madison, Wisconsin. Yeah, that's a good school too, but it's also public school, okay? Yeah. Okay, we'll take five minutes, okay? I need some vocal rest. So. Yeah, I, earlier today I drank too much, okay? So that's why I'm not drinking. I'm just drinking water. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's take five minutes.
Yeah. Okay. I think I can start drinking a little bit. Okay. Um. Yeah. I've been detoxed. So. Yeah. So I had a long nap. Then I woke up and watching some news in the cell phone, right? On my bed after I woke up. And, um. Yeah, it, it was a bummer, really. Senate trial of Quiddle, very disappointed that Republican senators, okay. But seven people, seven Republican senators did vote to convict him, okay. Yeah, Mr. President Trump, former, okay. It was a down, okay. I mean, all the other 43 Republican senators vote to acquit him, okay. That was a big downer, bummer, so I felt really bad because too much partisanship, okay, so yeah. Well, but it's over now, so we don't have to talk about it, okay, so let's, yeah, good time will come, metaphysically, yeah, it's very metaphysical crisis. Very low point in America, okay, morally, ethically, but good day will come, okay, no doubt, no doubt. It goes up and down, up and down, like any, anything else, okay, like economic cycle, okay, yeah, it, it's nothing new here, right? Things will get better, so, yeah. Yeah. What else do we talk about? Well, let me get some tongs, okay? So. So what did I eat in this afternoon, after the previous episode? I ate um, beef stew, cooked with Korean ramen noodle. It was good. Yeah, just a bunch of stew meat, beef meat, and in the water, microwaved. After that, yeah, put some ramen noodle. Yeah, it was good, yeah. Because there's a lot of meat, stew meat, right? Yeah, so I fully cook them, boil them in the water, microwave, okay. And there's a lot of leftover, okay. I guess I ate about half of it. Yeah. I'll eat some later. I, I fr froze it, okay, in the freezer. That, that was really good, okay. Yeah, once in a while, beef meat, right? Yeah, it's for a change. I, other times, I mostly eat chicken, okay, because it's cheaper. Once in a while, yeah, beef meat. Pork meat, yeah, I do. Every once in a while. Yeah, what else? Well, not many things going on, okay. Yeah, my life is very simple, so... Uh, maybe some dream story, huh? Yeah. About a couple of nights ago, I guess, uh, I had this interesting dream where, you know, elevator, right? The door, you, in case somebody got stuck into it, yeah, you can manually open it, okay? Elevator have this hole, the elevator door has this hole, right? Yeah, with some hook, okay, you can kind of latch, click it, okay, so this long metallic bar, okay, then you can manually open, okay, so yeah, we had to do that when there was earthquake, like two years ago, right? Big earthquake, yeah, so yeah, nobody died. 
Oh, thank goodness. Okay. Yeah, it was big or square. Okay, so. Very scary. Okay. This is famous picture of Alaskan car road totally destroyed. Okay. That famous picture, okay, that's about a couple miles from this house, right? Epicenter of that earthquake about two years ago. Was it like 2018? Something like that, right? In was it November? Something like that? I don't know. I think it was 2018, wasn't it? I don't know. But epicenter was very not very far from this house. Okay, <laughs> maybe five miles away from this house. Okay, but no cracked wall in this house. Okay, I was at work. When earthquake happened, what happened was, um, so we felt it, right? I was at work in my office, okay. Byron shaking, and I, I was supposed to go under the table so that nothing fall on me, but I was like, oh, it's just earthquake, okay. I was kind of complacent, and then it was it, the shaking tremor got bigger and bigger. And the uh, bookshelf at work, it bounced off the wall and it fell and hit my lower back. Right? Then I was like, oh my goodness, you serious? Then I crawled under the table. Huh? But no injury, it was just bruised, that's all, okay? But ouch, yeah, it was hard. I, I, I was like, Limping, walking very slow, like an old man, okay, for a while, but it got healed up, okay, so it's just bruise, all right, so I, because I exercise, okay, so yeah, it got healed up, okay, myself, but it was scary, I thought I might die that day, okay, so ha, <sighs> it was scary. I was scared for my life. Under the table, okay, it was, it was such a violent shake, okay, so all the bookcases fell, I mean, most of them, and so we had to clean it up, right? <laughs> Let it stand again and put all the books in the shelf, oh my goodness, for the next couple of days, man, oh, shoot. <laughs> because in the office, we have this room full of this files couple of months before that we cleaned up all these files and put it orangely nicely and they all fell okay all these boxes of files so we had to clean it all over again oh shoot uh -huh. <laughs> it took a couple of weeks okay oh my goodness it was scary lights went out Electricity went out, okay, but thankfully no fire in the building, okay. Maybe some other buildings, I don't know, okay. Yeah, and uh, the office building has some cracks in the wall, okay. But thankfully this house did not have any cracks whatsoever, okay. So I came home, right, and I found this, some of the vodka bottles fell on the floor, in this room, okay. Yeah, I had to clean that up, but that was it. No broken glasses. Nothing broke in this house. Okay. <laughs> so I guess this house is very firm foundation, okay. Because the road, they got destroyed. It's kind of in the middle of the creek bed, okay. So on the, the road, asphalt, is just a bunch of earth soil okay is in the middle of creek bed okay so yeah so it, it did suffer damage but they construction workers repair that road very quickly in a matter of days maybe a week okay 
the, the road reopened, okay, so. Ah, that's so great, okay, construction workers. Two thumbs up, all right, yeah. They're fantastic, professionals. So I had the Alaska adventure, right? Yeah, I fell in the glacial pool. It was very dark gray water. It was in the morning. When was that? Maybe about a year, about a year ago. Who was it last year? It could have been last year, okay? I don't recall. About a year ago. Right now it's 2021, right? About a year ago, okay? I think it was last year, actually. Because, this, like, after the election was over, right? I ran for Alaska State Senate. I lost. That was August. But two months later, in October, I think, I think it was last year. Huh? Okay. Yeah, I went hiking in the glacier park, professionally managed, but I deviated by mistake from the established trail on top of the glacier, okay? It was by mistake, okay? And then I fell into the pool. Why? It was like October, maybe September, okay? So, in the morning, it was Saturday morning, okay? It gets cold, but not too cold. So, the, some parts of the glacier is, has very thin ice. Underneath that, glacier pool. Very cold water. How deep was that? That I don't know. It could have been 20 feet deep. I don't know why. I did not feel the bottom of that pool. But I know how to swim, right? Yeah, so I, it took me a while to crawl out of that glacial pool. <sighs> that was very scary. Why? I tried to crawl out of that pool, right? Eyes keep on breaking. Okay. And after a minute or so, it stopped breaking and I was able to crawl out of that pool, okay. It was scary and um, did I think I might die that day? Yes, I did. I thought I might die that day. <laughs> it was scary. Mm. But it was good in the sense that, um, I mean, I did not lose anything, but my cell phone, Soaked in water, so it gave me opportunity to change my cell phone. But that cell phone was very old. Okay, so so now I have a brand new cell phone, and it works so well, right? And I also I was able to save all the photo pictures data from that old cell phone before it totally go out go blank, okay, I was able to USB transfer photo files, so nothing was lost, okay. Uh, <coughs> it was scary, okay, very. Okay, let's take five minutes break, okay. Yeah. Some more Alaska adventure story about that. Story time, right? Yeah. Was scary. <laughs> Very scary. Oh boy. It was scary.
some other stories, okay, some different states. Close encounter. Not that, maybe not that close encounter with death. Maybe not, but some scary ex experience I had. When I was in Kona, Ithaca, New York, okay, I was dating a lady who in New York, suburb of New York, okay. It's like five hour drive, okay, so one day in the weekend, I drove from Ithaca, New York to, all the way to New York, New York, okay, there's like five, seven hours drive, and because I missed my ex-girlfriend very much, um, I oversped, I went over speed limit. How fast was I driving? I don't know, but it was at least 10 miles more than speed limit. I was young and dumb back in the days, but nowadays I don't speed. I abide by speed limit. Okay, I'm a very gentle driver nowadays. Well, back in the days, I was how old was I? Young was I? It's like 2004, 2005. So I was like 27. Okay. Yes, I was reckless. Okay, drove too fast. My on the car in the highway, my car started to swerve, and it went hit the median. The grassy area, okay, and my car started to tumble like roller coaster a couple of times. <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness, what is this? <laughs> totally like roller coaster. My car totaled, okay, it did roll a couple of times, but God blessed me when it stopped rolling on the median and nobody else was involved. Thank goodness, okay. It stopped right side up, so, and my car was fuming, smoking, and the balloon popped up, right? And uh, I unbuckled my seatbelt, tried to open my driver's side door, it was jammed. Okay. Then I crawled out of car to the passenger side door, it was not jammed there, okay, so, yeah, and crawled as far away from the car as possible, because I thought it might explode, it was smoking, okay, <sighs> my body was in shock, but I did not break any bones, okay, but my body was in shock, I was just lying on the grass, after crawling as far as, as, as I, my body could, but my car did not explode. Okay, thank goodness. What car was that? I think it was yeah, Hyundai. Korean car, okay. I guess it was a very nice car, okay. So, it was a brand new car, okay. So, but I totaled it. Car insurance, they pay for it, okay, no problem, okay. Yeah. So some kind and generous people stopped their car and there was an Near Scranton, Scranton, Pennsylvania. Okay. Yeah. And they were white people. Okay. Kindly, generously stopped their cars and called 911 for me. And I asked them for a bottle of water. And they said, no, we cannot give that to you because we don't know whether you have internal injury. Okay. But I assured them, no, I don't have any injury. When your body is in shock. Yeah. You have huge craving of water, right? Okay, so... And then, police officer came, okay? And I asked the officer, hey, can you please give me a good bottle of water? And he did. And I think that's was really good decision, okay? Yeah, it didn't do any harm to me, okay? I needed that water, okay? My body was in shock, okay, so... Great people, okay, so... And then I ambulance came and I went to Scranton, Pennsylvania hospital, emergency room, x-rays, no broken bones. <laughs> and I was released after a couple of hours. I was able to walk very slowly. My body was still in shock. So I took the bus and came back. I was young and dumb driving too so fast, okay, so. Yeah. 
I don't drive fast anymore, okay? No. Some other interesting stories? Yeah, I got some more. <sighs> I mean, of course, then ex-girlfriend, okay, we dated for maybe two, three months and we broke up and went our ways, okay, no problem. So I dropped out of Cornell after two years, okay, and I started driving my car, different car, okay. It was Chevy, red Chevy Corsica, which was featured in my movie, Therapy for Metrophobia, okay. Yeah, I purchased that car from my friends uh, uh, in Ithaca, New York, okay. And then drove all the way to Los Angeles, California. It took me like two, maybe three, four days, right? Across America, right? All the way from Eastern Coast to the Western Coast. Ithaca, New York to Los Angeles, California, okay. I love this country, okay? Yeah. Great people too. Yeah, I love Americans. Yeah. So, one night, I was just driving. I got sleepy, so I went, exited the highway. It was more like farmland, somewhere in the Midwest. Okay, I don't know what state. Maybe Kansas, I don't know, okay. And I took a nap, and it was in the summer, so it was very hot. So I could not sleep in my car, it's just too hot, okay. What did I do? I sleep, slept outside of my car. Underground. At night. Why did I, did I not go to a hotel? Well, I was sleeping in the highway, and there was no hotel around that area. I, 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 I did go to hotel when there is one and when I was sleepy, okay. But at that particular night, when I exited the highway, there was no hotel around there. America is a big land, so there are some area where there's no hotel. And I was sleepy. Okay? So I slept underground. It was in the middle of the night. Hot summer. That was like year 2006, okay? So I just slept on the ground next to my car without nothing, no blanket, no nothing. <laughs> just lie down there like this, okay? <laughs> Supine position. And then I heard some sound. I think it was a spider. Crawling right next to my ear, okay? <laughs> I was like, yeah, whatever. I guess a fairly big spider, like tarantula or whatever, okay? Just kind of cute. Another day. It was during the day. I was sleepy, exited the highway. It was during the day. So I parked my car somewhere like farmland, right? And I took a nap, again, next to my car, underground, during the day. I said some kind and generous sentiment stopped and asked me if I was okay. He was also a white guy, okay? And, oh yeah, I'm just taking a nap, okay? Oh, hey man, I thought you were dead or something. Oh no, I'm just taking a nap, okay? But thank you for taking so. Yeah, black people, white people, they were great. Hispanic people, blacks, browns, Hispanics. Blacks, browns, whites, they were fantastic Americans. I love them, okay? And I have been very much loved by them too. Okay. All of them, okay? God bless America, Americans. Ah, they are nice. Yeah. Let's take five minutes break, okay? Story time. So. Yeah. Okay.
So, uh, yeah. So I drove the, my car all the way from Ithaca, New York to Los Angeles, California. And I needed a job, right? So I worked in McDonald's as drive through crew. Also, I cleaned the bathroom, sweeping, mopping the floor, McDonald's. What town? I think that McDonald's joint was in Studio City. It's San Fernando Valley, okay? Yeah. It was tough, okay, so I was working Subway Sandwich, a sandwich maker, okay. That was year 2006, so I was like 28, okay. Yeah, making minimum wages. So I, got, I was able to pay my bills, okay. Yeah. It was tough, okay. Then, after that, I got a job as a computer programmer. So I dropped out of PhD, Cornell, after two years. Before that, yeah, medicine, Wisconsin, computer science degree, Bachelor of Science degree. And, but I had to work to pay the bills because I didn't know anybody, no job lined up, okay. Yeah, kind of generously, they hired me, McDonald's, Subway, God bless them, okay. It was tough. It was not easy. Okay. Making minimum wage. <sighs> Later on, I got a job as a computer programmer. Okay. In Pasadena, California. Okay. <coughs> it was small business. How many employees? About 20, 30. So kind of medium sized. Okay. And they made jewelries. They ran fantastic business. Okay. The business owner, creator, small business, they were, they were um, Chinese, um, Chinese Americans, okay, yeah. bilingual, okay. very impressive, okay, <laughs> great product, okay, the jewelry, I, I bought some of my own from that company, okay, because it was so beautiful, jewelry, and I was dating a lady, and I gave it to her, okay, so, as a gift. The, what's that, bracelet. Okay. Let me wash my eyes. Yeah, so I worked there, uh, I guess, for several months. And then I was laid off. Why? Because my main focus is to become an actor. Okay. But I did very well in that company. Okay. But I have some attitude. Right. Yeah. So. There was very first job as a programmer outside of school okay and i did very well okay yeah but i was laid off okay yeah but very impressive business yeah chinese american business owners <sighs> wonderful product okay huge fan okay yeah so I, I was laid off okay because i was more interested in acting okay so during my spare time i go to auditions and acting right yeah so I was laid off and kind of fired, okay, so, but it was laid off, okay, so, mutually agreeable because, yeah, I had some attitude of issue, well, not attitude issue, but, yeah. So, so, and then I studied programming languages, more recent development in computer programming, and I got another job as a computer programmer. Okay, yeah. That job lasted about three years. Okay. And after that, 
I moved out of Los Angeles, California. Okay, why? I had enough of acting, okay? Yeah, and Los Angeles, California, beautiful town, but it's too hot, too dry. So I started having this constipation problem, okay? So for the health reason, I, I had to get out of Los Angeles, California. It's too hot, too dry, constipation, okay? Yeah. My body is very sensitive to temperature and mo moisture, okay? So, yeah. So I moved up north, okay? Resigned from my position, moved up north to San Jose, California, Silicon Valley, okay? I started to uh, interview, come to program job. Uh, yeah, interview was going well. Like, I interviewed like Mozilla, today's Firefox, okay? And um, some video gaming companies. It, it was going well, but I decided to join the US Army instead. Why? To try something new, right? I need some brain break, brain vacation. Yeah, let's do some brawn, physical labor, okay? US Army junior enlisted soldier, okay? So, yeah. So I went to the recruiting station. It just happened to be in the Army recruiting station, okay? I could have joined Navy, Marine, Air Force, Coastal Guard, but I thought it was all the same thing, okay? I didn't know anything about U.S. military back then, okay. That was 2009. So I, there was this recruiting station, it just happened to be an re army recruiting station, okay. Yeah. So I joined the U.S. Army. And the rest is history, okay. So. They are so welcoming, they are so avuncular. My army recruiters, they're African-American gentlemen, or Hispanic-American gentlemen, okay. Uh, they are very nice to me, like uncle or uncle, right? So welcoming, okay? And they recommended me military occupational specialty, MOS, uh, the helicopter electrician, okay? I just took it. Yeah, yeah I took ASVAB test, it's 100% score ASVAB, right? Because I studied for it. Yeah. How long? Uh, maybe a month, okay. So I took PT test, like push-ups, sit-ups, to my run, and I practiced for it, and I got in, okay. And we had this Patriot Club, right, something like that, okay. In San Jose, nice motel, hotel, nice, very nice hotel, okay, good food. Some kind of orientation, okay. It's like joint venture, okay. So just before we go to basic combat training, okay, the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine, Coast Guard, brand new recruits. Just before we went to basic combat training, yeah, we stayed in that hotel uh, for a day as an orientation. It was very nice, very nice program. I, I think it was called Freedom Club, okay. We have nice t-shirt, Freedom Club, okay. It was nice. Then we went, I mean, each of us went to different army or navy, whatever bases. I went to Fort Benning, Georgia, Columbus, Georgia, okay, for basic combat training, okay. It was nice, okay. I, I love the experience, okay. US Army, good old days. Army is such a nice institution, okay. A lot of fond memories. So after base combat training, then AIT, Advanced Individual Training in Augusta, Georgia. Okay. That's like three months in base combat training for Benning, Georgia. There are about six months in Augusta, Georgia, Advanced Individual Training, which is about electrician for helicopters, that kind of deal, right? After that, I was stationed in Fort Hood, Texas. <laughs> it was nice. I liked it. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. Then we deployed to Afghanistan for a year. Yeah. Uh, it was great. Okay. The only thing in Afghanistan, the one thing that gave me hard time is Constipation. It was dry desert, hot, dry. So 
we were there for one year and for the last two or three months I was suffering from this constipation. Okay, oh look, that that was the difficult part. Literally pain in the kaisto, okay. When I walk, when I sit down, oh, it was very painful. Kind of hemorrhoid a little bit. But not the old hemorrhoid, but just constipation, laceration, this uh fissure, right? It was very painful. Sometimes I did cry because it was enormous painful. Okay. But no permanent injury, okay. So after one year we came back to Fort Hood, Texas. It was a very beautiful day. Beautiful day, okay. And it got healed up. My constipation, this some laceration, fissure. It got healed up in a matter of a week. Yeah, it's combat deployment stress and also food. Not many vegetables, not many fruits, the deployment area, okay. But after one week, I got completely 100% healed up. No permanent injury there, okay. Yeah. No. I recovered in a matter of one week. That's it, okay. Yeah. But yeah, I had some hard time, constipation issue. When I was in Afghanistan, Le the last three two months, okay, it was very painful. After that, after we came back to Clint, Texas, Fort Hood, Texas, one week that was that, okay, I got completely healed, hundred percent. All right, so yeah, we take five minutes break, okay. Now I tell you some more interesting stories, okay. Story time, right? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> <coughs> So uh, we came back to Fort Hood, Texas. That's year 2012, something like that. Okay, so yeah, I got out of U.S. Army. I joined the U.S. Army in 2009. I, I got out after four years. This contract. I did not re-up, re-enlist. Okay, why? After four years, 2013, I was 35. My body start to break down. Daily pity. I could not handle it anymore. Okay, at the end of my army career, I was walking like an old man. I could not even run. Lower back pain, knee pain. I could not even run. So yeah, after four years, yeah, I honorably discharged. I was honorably discharged. Okay, with this army contract, yeah, four years active. 
four years inactive reserve, but later four years inactive reserve, uh, I was not called to the duty because there was no foreign war. Okay, now I'm purely veteran. The four years inactive reserve status is over. Yeah? Yeah. So now I'm totally after four years active, four years inactive, it's all done and over with. Okay. So we came back to Fort Hood, Texas. It was such a beautiful day, okay. What month was that? I think it was like May. Like 2012. Bright sunshine day, okay. Yeah, let me sing your song, okay? Let me grab my cell phone. <clears throat> <laughs> Karaoke night, huh? Yeah. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I can see all obstacles in my way Gonna the dark clouds that had me blind It's gonna be a bright, 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 sunshiny day Yeah Well, let me sing some more of that <sighs> Yeah, yeah, free economy content, man. Fantastic, right? Oh, yes, I can make it now. The pain is gone. All of the bad feeling has disappeared. Here's the rainbow I've been praying for. It's gonna be a bright, 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 so shiny day. Yeah, good song. So, it was a beautiful day. Sometime in May, I think. All right, we came back to Fort Hood, Texas. Clean Texas. Fantastic. I love the town. Okay. Great restaurants. I love the landscape. Texas. Okay, I, I love it. It was beautiful. Day. Okay. Two thousand twelve. Eight years ago. Right. Well. Almost, we have nine, almost nine years ago, okay, so. It was a beautiful day, okay, oh, blue sky, right? Very sunshiny. It's like, we are home. I, Afghanistan, fantastic country, great people, right? We were there because Taliban, that kind of repressive regime, kind of dictatorship, kind of uh, bully, okay? So we are there to help, okay, but for whole year when I, we were in Afghanistan, uh, we were never once attacked. We were lo we locked out. Okay, some other colleagues of mine went to different base in Afghanistan, and they got some mortar attack. I only heard their stories. Okay, but we were not attacked once. Okay, you because we were deployed to very safe region in Al in Afghanistan, not Alaska, Afghanistan. Okay, so, yeah. I never got outside of base when I was in Afghanistan for the whole year, okay? And the only time I used my M16 AR-15 rifle was to recertify re in the shooting range, paper target, okay? There was that, okay? We carried our weapon 24-7, okay? But no incident, no shooting incident whatsoever, okay? So we all behaved. Some verbal arguments here and there, right? Every now and then, but 
No, we behaved. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> so we came back to Fort Hood, Texas, Clean, Clean, Texas. Okay, and I got a apartment, one bedroom apartment, I think. Yes, one bedroom apartment. Okay, because we had the option after the deployment. We after we came back from deployment, so we are combat veteran with combat badge, combat patch. Okay. So they gave us a choice. We, I, I was still E4, specialist, okay? Do you want to live in the barracks, in the base, or are you going to live off base? I said, yeah, I'm going to live off base. So I got one bedroom apartment, okay? So, yeah. Well, Heiko Heights. Heiko Heights. Yeah, it was nice one bedroom apartment. About 10 15 minutes from the Fort Hood, Texas base, but it was off base. Okay, so they gave us option. Why? Yeah, seniority, right? We're combat veterans. We came back, so they gave us option. Okay, yeah. So I chose off base option. Okay, so. I remember the day we came back, okay, it was such a beautiful day, right? So, yeah, we went to airport in Texas and then we took the bus to come back to Fort Hood, Texas. It's a great place, I agree, okay? Yeah, it's a big base. Potentially, possibly biggest military base in America, Fort Hood, Texas. I love it, okay? I love Fort Hood, Texas, clean Texas. When I first stationed in Fort Hood, Texas, it, we, we were stationed in Clean Base. Back in the day, they used to call it Clean Base. Later on, they call it West Fort Hood. And it's in Coparas Cove, right next to Clean, Texas. You have Coparas Cove, Belton, uh, Clean, Texas, Heiko Heights, they're all together, nearby towns, okay? Yeah. Love that place, okay. Beautiful. They have foxes, gray fox. They have scorpions, snakes, and catfish in some lake, pond, okay. I just fish, catfish, okay. They taste very good too, okay. Very muddy taste. But I didn't see any crocodiles though, okay. But so, some scorpions, snakes, fox, Dior, yeah, so yeah. It was very romantic, okay? I'm not talking about men, women, dating, no, not that kind of romance. So, nature, Texas, very romantic. Because before I deployed to Afghanistan, I went to special forces training, okay? so. I prep, I exercised, practiced, trained individual night land, individual night land navigation. Okay, so during the weekend, I would go out there by myself at night. Yeah, with MRE, tenting gear, ponchos, 50 pound rucksack bag. Okay, so yeah. Some training area out, just outside of Fort Hood, Texas, with map, compass. Flashlight, MRE, water. It's kind of like it's outside of Fort Hood base, but it's still a training area. Okay, so yeah. With my ASU Army Combat Uniform, Army Boots, 50 pound rucksack, at night. Around Fort Hood, Texas, but outside the base. Parked my car and start walking, looking at the map with flashlight, compass, 
individual night land navigation training just by myself. Before I went to Fort Bragg, North Carolina, okay. It was so quiet at night, all by myself. So I parked my car and went to the forest. Yeah, in the map, yeah, I made these checkpoints here and there, okay. I would just walk, sometimes run to get on top of that mountain. In the map, yeah, there's pond. Okay, that's the next destination. Okay, next destination is some cemetery. Okay, so mountain top, pond, cemetery. Yeah, individual then night land navigation. Okay, yeah, I was decent at it. Okay, so yeah, I hit my points. Okay. One time. It's kind of a little bit semi-dark, it's in the evening on Friday or Saturday in the weekend, okay. Yes, walking in the forest, there's a snake slithering right past me, okay, I saw it. I was like, hey, snakey, snakey, how are you? Good to see you. And the snake was like, Pff. it didn't care about me, okay, it just kept going doing his business, minding his own business. I saw it right next to my feet, okay? That was cool, right? Slithering snake just passing by, okay? It was going that way, the other way, okay? I saw it, okay? Cool. <laughs> right next to my foot. So effortlessly slithering by, okay? It was beautiful. All right. Then I hit the next, yeah, mountaintop destination in the map. Okay, I got it. Okay, so next destination, a pond. Okay, so I went there. Okay, I hit my points. All right, all by myself at night. Okay, and then I sat down next to a pond. Okay, there are some frogs. Quack, 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 quack. Yeah. So I sat down, had my MRE as a meal, drink some water, and yes, I did smoke a cigarette. It was so peaceful, I looked up, stars, very romantic, right? Individual night land navigation, right? Yeah. It was beautiful. Yeah. All by myself, there was nobody or Nobody else around. Just by myself. In and about Clint, Texas, outside of Fort Hood, Texas, okay, outside the base. But it was kind of training ground, kind of government property, okay. But yeah, hiking place, okay, so at night, all by myself, okay. Was I scared? No. Uh it was during the summer, springtime, so it was warm, okay. It was not cold at all. It was so quiet and peaceful. Just me and the nature. Right? Yeah. It was beautiful. Was I scared? No. Why? Look, it's Texas. There are no bears. Yeah, there are snakes, but they don't care about me, okay? They just go about their business. <laughs> they mind their own business, okay? Yeah, there are no bears. In Alaska, yeah, we have bears, alright? So, when I go hiking deep in the woods, I carry my gun. And also bear spray, okay? But in Texas, yeah, there are no bears. Uh, there are some hawks, wild pigs, okay? Yeah, yeah, so what? Wild pigs, they can be very dangerous, okay? I heard some stories, okay? Wild pigs, hawks, yeah, they can kill people. Okay? And they can eat people too, okay? I heard some stories, okay? So, but I didn't see anyone, any pigs, wild pigs. And there are no, no bears in Texas, as far as I know. Okay. 
<laughs> so yeah, yeah. No, I wasn't scared at all. Yeah, it was at night. I was by myself. But look, I know some martial arts, okay, so no problem, I guess. I was not scared at all. It was just beautiful. Nice sky, stars, right? So quiet, peaceful. Nobody else around at night in the middle of a forest. Individual night land navigation. Okay. I plenty of food, MRE meals ready to eat. So I ate some. Plenty of water. And I smoked cigarette. Right. Then I walked back to my car. <laughs> okay, so that was the weekend. Individual night land navigation training. All by myself. Okay. It was so beautiful, romantic. Alone with the nature. Alone with God. Right? Yeah. So romantic nature. It was so beautiful. Good old days. Yeah. Some fond memories. Yeah. I don't recommend this to ladies, okay? Unless they really get really good at martial arts, okay? I'm a man, okay? Yeah. And I do martial arts. Not very good at it, but I know some martial arts, okay? So, yeah. Individual night land navigation, okay? Training. But I don't recommend this to... I do not recommend this to ladies unless they are very good at martial arts, okay? So... But I'm a man, so, yeah. We like that stuff, right? Yeah. Individual night land navigation. Going into the forest at night, right? Alone. Right? I loved it. I really, really loved it, okay, so. The kind of guy thing, yeah. Wait, we'll take five minutes break, okay? So, some story time, okay? Good stuff. Okay. Yeah.
Okay, so <laughs> some funny story. Between North, North Carolina, Fort Bragg, Special Forces training, okay, yeah. I dropped out during the individual night, night land navigation training, okay, why? Because I was too hungry and I was lost and it was raining. I got cold, it was too cold, hungry, I was lost, lonely. So I had MRE and I called in, okay, so that was the end of my Special Forces career, okay, after two weeks. <laughs> it was three weeks in hell course, selection course, okay, it was beautiful, okay, I loved it. Met fantastic people, okay, yeah. Some shenanigans too, okay, I remember there's this white guy, Caucasian, he was younger than me, okay, he has this attitude, right, he's like, oh, yeah, whatever, okay, so, I, you know what, so I, uh, tried to correct him, right, he was way too arrogant, okay, so, yeah, but, yeah, there's some shenanigans like that, okay, but some others, white people, Brown people, Hispanics, black people, they were cool, okay, so most of them, okay, so, they, but there are some guys with some immature attitudes, okay, so. I got some beef with them, a little bit, okay, so. Okay, yeah. But yeah, they are, mostly they are cool, okay, so. Uh, yeah. Whatever. So, yeah, individual nine nav navigation training, okay, they sent us one by one in the evening. North Carolina, Fort Bragg, okay. Yeah, I was doing okay. I mean, yeah, I got lost after that, okay, so I called in, okay, because it was just too much, okay. I was hungry, so I ate MRE that we are not supposed to, okay. Then I called in, okay, I give up, okay, yeah, so there was that, okay, and after that, came back to Fort Hood, Texas, and I finished editing my movie when I was still in barracks, okay, saw me to film festivals, 50 of them, 5 zero. okay, half a Century, half of 100, okay, 50, 5 zero. And then we deployed to Afghanistan. So I got a lot done, okay. I tried, trained as a special forces candidate, dropped out, and then picked up my movie editing, therapy for metaphobia, okay. Saw me to film festivals, and after that we deployed to Afghanistan. Okay. During, while I was in Afghanistan, I studied for LSAT, low school admission test. Whole time. In my spare time, okay. And then we came back after one year from Afghanistan, okay. I took LSAT, got decent score, 171 out of 180, okay. Yeah, top 3%. Applied to law schools, accepted, and then starting, I started to study for patent bar intellectual property for a year, okay, in the last fourth year in Fort Hood, Texas, so I got out honorably discharged, not dishonorably charged, okay, honorably discharged, okay, and then I took a pattern by exam the day after I got out on my way to Michigan Law School, and I passed pattern by exam, okay. And the rest of it is history, okay? I was busy, I was always working, okay? During my spare time, yeah, studying the law, reading, I read the law, okay? So case books, dirt chip, all the editions in Amazon.com, okay? So I read all of that. Intellectual property, yeah. I did not take expensive classes. 
I just studied and I passed. Patent bar exam. Okay. The day after I got out of the US Army. Okay. What's the town name when I took that online exam? I don't remember. Okay. I think it was north of Korean Texas, so maybe Waco, Texas, maybe. Uh, the town where this Baylor's college is, okay, I think, okay. Yeah, I passed, okay, so. And I called my parents, hey, mom, dad, I passed the pattern bar exam. And they congratulated me. I was in a motel, okay. Yeah, that was nice, okay. Next morning, yeah, start driving to Michigan. I passed Oklahoma, okay. Missouri. <clears throat> and then got into Ann Arbor, Michigan. That was like year 2015. No, no, 2013, sorry. Yeah. What took me like two, three days, okay, so Ann Arbor, Michigan, okay, 2013, right? Yeah. So I, might pa I parked my car and went to a restaurant in downtown Ann Arbor, Michigan. Beautiful place, beautiful people, okay, so, yeah, just, you know, outside the restaurant, on the street, some tables, chairs, yeah, drinking dry red wine. So I'm here, okay, yeah, where law school is. Good. I mean, I got my one bedroom apartment in Ypsilanti, Michigan, okay, pre-arranged, okay, so, yeah, but I just wanted to check out Ann Arbor, Michigan, where law school is, okay, so, so yeah, it's nice, never been there before, okay, yeah, had my lunch there, and nice restaurant on the street, downtown Ann Arbor, Michigan, yeah, drinking red wine, just one wine. And my dinner got so far up. Then I drove back to Ypsilanti, Michigan apartment. Very nice one, okay. Yeah. With my GI Bill that I learned, Yellow Ribbon Program, God bless those wonderful school officials, veteran, so Veterans Administration, VA, okay. Fantastic people, God bless them, okay. School officials who gave me scholarship, Dean scholarship, okay. Yeah, it was nice. Give me a second. So, social messaging, everyone, yeah, it's just spam. <laughs> Yeah, so after US Army career, yeah, the last fourth year, for a year, I studied for pattern bar exam, integral property, okay, law. I passed the pattern bar, okay, so the next day I got out of the US Army after four years, okay. Fourth year, I studied for that exam, okay. It was tough, it was not easy, okay. Intellectual property law, okay, patent. I studied for one year, okay, all by myself, in my spare time, the last year, okay. But that's not the only thing I did. I also joined this marathon team, 10 mile around, okay, after we got back from Afghanistan to Fort Hood, Texas, okay. So, fourth year in US Army, I was in school. Basic combat training, advanced interval training, okay, BCT, AIT, okay, this first year. Second year, Fort Hood, Texas. Third year, Afghanistan. Fourth year, back in Fort Hood, Texas. And after four years of active duty service as junior enlisted soldier, I got out, okay? But the very fourth year, back in Fort Hood, Texas, I studied for pattern by exam. 
third year when I was in Afghanistan, yeah, I studied for LSAT, Law School Admission Test. We got back from Afghanistan to Fort Hood, Texas. I took Law School Admission Test, and I got decent score, top three percent in America. Law School applicants, okay, because I've been studying LSAT for a long time, okay. Even when I was in Los Angeles, California, as a computer programmer, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I thought LSAT is done, and I got admission, Michigan Law School, okay. What do I do next? Yeah, pattern by exam. I saw that for one year, okay. The next day, after I got out of the U.S. Army, yeah, I took pattern by exam because I've been studying for that one year. Okay, I passed it. Okay. Yeah, next day, yeah, well, before that, yeah, call my parents in Seoul, South Korea. Hey, I passed the pattern by exam. They said congratulations. Oh, thank you. Okay, and then next day, oh, uh, well, I was in a motel parking lot smoking my cigarette again okay, when I call my parents. Okay. After that, next day, start driving north, east. We passed by, I mean, I passed by, I was driving by myself, okay. Yeah, Oklahoma, St. Louis, Missouri, okay, then Michigan, okay. Went there, parked my car, went to a restaurant by myself. Yeah, although dry red wine, maybe Cabernet Sauvignon or Moro, whatever, okay. And then after that, nice pasta or steak, beef steak, whatever. And so what you know, okay, then I went to Ypsilanti, Michigan. Fantastic town, okay, great town, great people. Yeah, checked into my apartment, one bedroom apartment, okay. So. And the next morning, yeah, orientation day of the Ann Arbor, Michigan Law School. It was very tight schedule, okay, so. It was nice, okay. We take five minutes break and I tell you what happened is orientation. Of Michigan Law School. Back in 2013, Eight years ago. Huh? It was in May. 2013, I think. It was nice, okay. Nothing bad. It was all good. Okay. Alright, let's take five minutes, okay? So. Interesting story, okay? Yeah.
Yeah, so low school, uh, what, low school orientation day, morning, okay, the next morning, <laughs> after I got back from, after I passed the exam, pattern by exam, all right, in Waco, Texas, I think that's the name of the town, okay, Baylor College, around the town, okay, north of, about two hours north of Fort Hood, Texas, current Texas, okay. Yeah, then I drove, drove, and then passed Oklahoma, and then St. Louis, Missouri, and then Ann Arbor, Michigan, okay. Have a nice lunch, and checked into my apartment, pre-arranged. They gave me some discount because I was a veteran, okay, so, yeah. Very nice one-bedroom apartment in Ypsilanti, Michigan, okay. About 20 hours. I mean, not 20 hours, 20 minutes from Ann Arbor, Michigan, okay, so I got one better off campus. Other people, yeah, they dormitory, okay, yeah, but I'm more off campus kind of guy, <laughs> okay, so. Next day, school orientation, low school orientation. I was in summer class, yes, summer starters, okay. I'm very sad that they got rid of that summer starter program. Okay. It was summer starter program back then, year 2013. Okay, so. so I drove my car in the morning. Okay, and yeah, 10 minutes prior, army discipline, right? Yeah, 15 minutes prior, whatever. Okay, parked my car in the Ann Arbor school campus from Ypsilanti to Ann Arbor, 20 minutes drive. Okay, parked my car. <coughs> Put some coins in there, okay, parking meter, whatever, okay. Actually, I got some parking lot spot in campus, okay. There's some program for graduate students, right? Yeah, parking lot in the campus, Ann Arbor, okay. Yeah, I, I bought that, okay. It was affordable, right? Yeah. So, parked my car, walked to this lecture hall, it was state-of-the-art kind of lecture hall with big screen, digital, I mean, it's projector, projector, it's just big screen, you can hook up your laptop and projector, kind of, good uh, state-of-art, maybe not too much, but whatever, okay. Yeah, so this room number, big lecture hall, okay. But I was very stoic, disciplined. I just got out of U.S. Army a couple of days ago. <laughs> so I was so used to this Army, U.S. Army discipline as a junior enlisted soldier, okay. Yeah, and yeah, there's this beautiful young lady in the hallway, but I didn't talk, okay. Most likely my colleagues, right? Yeah, fresh, fresh man, fresh woman, law school. I guess she was like her in mid twenties or whatever. I was like, there was a year two thousand thirteen, so I was like thirty five. I guess she was like twenty five something. Okay, but me being disciplined, heavily disciplined. Okay, U.S. Army. I just pe studied for LSAT. I did decent score, admission, scholarship, yellow ribbon, GI Bill, post 9 11 okay, good program, okay, and then Dean scholarship, kind and generously given to me, Michigan Law School, okay, and I just passed the pattern bar exam, okay, and then uh, I'm 35 years old, okay, and there's this lady, beautiful young lady, okay, she was in the hallway, but I did not talk to her, okay. Why? I was very stoic, disciplined, okay. Yeah. So I just went into the room, lecture hall, and there are some students there in the audience <clears throat> who came before I did law school orientation, very first day in law school, kind of late May. Back in 2013, eight years ago. Okay. <laughs> so, 
I opened the door. Big lecture hall, right? <clears throat> and I saw some students there, my colleagues, future colleagues, law school, first year, 1L. First law school year, 1L. First year law school. That's how they call it, 1L, 2L, 3L, okay. Okay, I look at them, okay, yeah, yeah, you guys are early birds. It was like 9 o'clock in the morning. Late in May, like May 31, <clears throat> 2013, okay. Okay, you guys are here already, okay. Then I opened the door, went to lecture hall, and there's some nice napkins, fruits, vegetables, some morning food, maybe some coffee, some biscuits. And I look down and on the floor there's some spilled drink. So I grab some napkins on the table and wiping them off on the floor of this lecture hall. And they giggled, giggled, they left. I was like, Oh, I'm not in the U.S. Army anymore. I'm a civilian, okay? But, yeah, I'm kind of used to this cleaning because some army joke I came up with, okay? If there's one thing that you learned from U.S. Army, you, you learn how to clean. <laughs> okay, so I was just... I just got out of, out of U.S. Army Korea two, three days ago, okay? When they spilled juice or coffee on the floor. Yeah, we grab napkins and we wipe it off. Okay. And they left. <laughs> they giggled. They were looking at me. Okay. So, oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm civilian now. I'm no longer in the US Army. Okay. okay. But still, yeah. Grab some napkins, spilled drink on the floor, wiping it off and Put in the trash can. I did that, and I said, "I took a seat." Uh, yeah, I didn't know anybody there. Okay, no familiar face. Brand new people, right? In Ann Arbor, Michigan Law School. So I sat there. Yeah, orientation law school. Very first day in law school, two thousand thirteen like May 31, something like that, okay. Nine o'clock in the morning. It was nice orientation. Yeah. yeah. Next day we went to some voluntary job in some farms in, you know, about some garden, in Ann Michigan school, University of Michigan, okay. Some farming, gardening, okay. Volunteerism, right, yeah. We do all that, okay. Get our hands dirty, right? Next day, the very first day in law school, okay. It was summer class, summer semester, late May. We took two classes, required classes, civil procedure and tort law, okay. They are very nice, okay. So yeah, that's cool. Yeah, just some more stories there, okay. I love civil procedure, okay. Very mathematical, you have deadlines, all this procedural, yeah, I love it, okay. Others didn't, okay, but I liked it a lot, okay. Because I love mathematics, calculation of numbers, <coughs> relate back doctrine, yeah, all these deadlines, okay, it's mathematical, okay, I liked it, okay, so. Total law, it was good class too, okay, so. Yeah. So this one particular total law class professor, okay, he was African-American, okay. I, I think he was like half, he kind of brown, okay, half black, half white, kind of brown, okay. And we had some chat after the class, okay, and then I told him, yeah, I, I'm a patent agent, okay, I took, studied for intellectual property law, patent. I 
passed passing by exam. Okay, and he told me, "Oh yeah, then yeah, you know more about law than your colleagues." And I said, "Yeah, maybe, yeah, but yeah, I love your class. Okay, yeah, I'm learning something new. Okay, yeah, I'm a veteran, and he's." I think he might be a veteran too, okay. I'm not quite sure, okay. So. But from what I recall, he might be an army veteran, okay. Very officer, okay. Very cool guy, okay. Civil professor, pro civil procedure professor, he's very amazing gentleman too. He's a white guy, okay. Probably in his 70s, 60s, okay. But I love his class, okay. I remember civil procedure professor. Okay, he said, "Yeah, Supreme Court, United States Supreme Court, Scudos, Supreme Court of the United States, Scudos. Yeah, they come with decision, but you should be able to challenge Supreme Court justices' opinions." Fantastic. Okay, he went to Harvard. Okay, civil procedure. Professor, okay, he went to Harvard, okay, he wrote books. He's one of the most famous professors in Emma, Michigan, okay. This Chinese wall of federal civil procedure, he was one of those prime authors, okay. Fantastic professor, okay. Yeah, huge fan, okay. Yeah, Supreme Court Justice's opinion, you should be able to challenge it. He, he said that, okay. Great professor. It's not rebellion, okay. No metaphysical challenge, okay. So I really loved his lectures, okay. So he was like seventies, sixties, okay. Good old professors, okay. Fantastic lectures. Huge fan. Total of professor, yeah, he was great too. Okay, so like theatrics, okay. He said, total of professor, half African American, half Caucasian American, kind of brown mixed race, I think. Okay, yeah, he said, yeah, law is not always the best solution, maybe some entertainment solution, movies, novels. He said that, okay, and he also told me about Mr. Hofeld, yeah, the right. Duty, dualism. I did mention that in this paper, copy on the paper. Okay, fantastic professor. Okay, so, yeah, they were cool. Okay. Good professors. Yeah, this was my first summer semester in Ann Arbor, Michigan Law School. Okay, okay, we'll take five minutes break. Okay, so yeah, I'm, I'm kind of drunk, but. I can walk straight, okay, so. I'm at home, so no problem, I'm not driving anywhere. Next morning, yeah, tomorrow's Monday, right? I have to go to work, no problem, okay. I love working, okay. Yeah. We're just having fun Sunday night, story time, right? No problem, I'm at home, okay. Okay. Let's take five minutes, okay? Okay.
Yeah, you know, I'm kind of drunk. I gotta get back to work tomorrow, okay? So let's wrap it up for tonight, all right? So what I can tell you is that, uh, yeah, yeah, there are some things that happens in the world that we cannot quite control. Like Senate trial of Donald J. Trump, yeah, I was very disappointed with all these Republican senators siding with him, right? Very disappointing, okay. Yeah, they're lying, okay. Going against their conscience, their knowledge, right? We know President Trump did something very wrong, okay. He is guilty. January 6th, 2021. Okay. But Republican senators, most of them, yeah, acquitted him. Okay. That's very sad, right? But people know that what President Trump did was very wrong and he's guilty okay yeah so yeah it's not over yet all right accountability responsibility okay it's not over yet okay so yeah but yeah we all are people we're not perfect we're not gods we are not prophets, we are not saints. Yeah, popes, justices, Supreme Court, we are not perfect people, okay? We are just people. People are people, okay? We are good and bad. Yes, self preserving, self serving. That's all of us, okay? So, but. We say in humanology, okay, yeah, best corpus of action. Ideally, yeah, he should give out his $10 million, President Trump, okay, to the victims of his own crime. Okay. Yeah. That's our recommendation. That's all I have to say. Okay, my dinner is getting ready, okay, in microwave, it's ramen noodle, some wonderful beef meat, beef stew meat mixed with seaweed that kim okay seaweed not marijuana no seaweed okay so korean style okay so it's worth cooking in the microwave okay so yeah. what movie am, am i gonna watch how about commando yeah, I'm not sure it's anything. Yeah, I stopped watching it, okay, because, yeah, it was game too slow, okay. I, I think I might watch Commando the rest of it, okay, so, okay, yeah. Happy Valentine's Day, okay? Have a good night. God bless you. I love you. God bless you for generations to come, okay? Yeah. God bless you. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Mm -hmm.